Hello and welcome to your final tutorial, I believe it is, in XHTML. And today I'm going to show you how to upload your website using FileZilla. So in the tools section of my website, or right above this tutorial, you should have seen the link for FileZilla. Uh, if you haven't, go check it out and download it. This is what I use for FTP purposes, file transfer protocol, in transferring my files to my server. Uh, so first let's double click this and this window will pop up now I'm going to assume that you already have access to a server or you have bought a domain name from a server and if you haven't I strongly encourage you go to iPage that's where I started they're great they have great customer service it's they have a great price and lots of features for that very cheap price it's like three dollars or something like that a month or maybe a year I don't know it's like it's really cheap um, anyways so in order to connect to your server in order to transfer your files all your files on your computer are here to, and this is your server over here as you can see we're not connected to any server so let's figure out how to do this uh, oh, the, the quick connect method which I wouldn't really recommend because you can't save anything is you type in your host name uh, I'm just going to use a vague name like FTP dot I don't know I'll just type in my website name after that programminghelp.org or something yeah, it might be it's probably going to be a little bit more complicated than this this is this is way too plain it's never this plain uh, whatever username you have for that web host unless they specify a different one when you register so just type in whatever your username is and then type in your password and then if they specify a port like for iPage I don't believe they do I never had to type in a port number uh, but if, if they do type that in then click quick, quick connect and it will um, your server your web page will load here um, in order to save this information what I do is I go to file site manager that's also what this is right here and this window will pull, um, open up and it will list all your sites so I'll just create a new site I'll call it programminghelp.org uh, and I'll use the same example as I did for the host so I'll type in ftp.programminghelp.org um, I have no port number I, I, I don't so I can't even make one up because I've never had to use this before uh, I use the normal file transfer protocol I don't believe you'll have to change it um, just plain FTP and then in order to uh, enter your username and password automatically go for normal and then type in whatever your username is and your password password and then when you're done click OK in order to save this then on this arrow you can now click programminghelp.org and it'll or whatever your website name is not this one and it'll connect to your server and then you'll see all um, probably very little will pop up here because there should be nothing on your website in order to to add information there what you do is first find your files I'm gonna find this folder right here I made this folder right here just for this tutorial so that would be on, in on my desktop and then look for website and open that up and let's say this is my main page now don't drag the whole website folder over there because then it won't read it on that page that loads the very first page that you see in default here the front page is where your index needs to go you need to drag and then drop it you can of course I can't because I'm not logged in anywhere right now and then you can also drag in all your other stuff your images and stuff uh, if you have any sub pages and whatnot and I'm going to get into more detail about these for organizing your website nicely. And that's it, really. Once you drag it over and it says direct directory listing successful, that's it. Um, it's over there. It shouldn't take any more than a minute uh, for your website to be loaded. You, you could press F5 on your web page and eventually, um, after a few ref refreshments, it, it will appear correctly. Uh, oh, and just so you know, there isn't much more to this. Yeah, that, that's it. Just this little thing here. Uh, let me just bring it back down. 
and that's really it and that's how you load your web pages all your subfolders if, if you have some here as well and that, that's about it that's you uploading your website to your server now I want to show you a little bit of organization for your website so I usually put all my files in just one folder like this and then this these files for example would be all the files I put on my uh, main page in fact I didn't move my CSS folder in there now in order now if you have more than one web page but you would like them to be added to the end of your URL to sub pages what you do is you create folders like this sub page one so for an example if this whole website was programming help dot org by um, your index folder that you'll have in here or your index file which would be a different file than that's a different index than this index and it must be called index um, my web this page would then be called programming help dot org slash sub page one or whatever the name of that folder is and then this one will pop up without any of those weird extensions at the end and that's what I do now if you have a similar style a CSS file that you want to use in multiple web pages what I do is oh I didn't want to open that as you can, I can see previous folder um, what I do is in each of my index files in the header file I'll create a link as you might have seen before and then within this I'll type in rel that attributes which is style sheet and then type equals text slash CSS and then for href before you might have just put down whatever its directory is on your computer for an example mine would just be sub page one slash or no it would be CSS slash then the file name default.css instead what you're going to want to do is type in the entire URL of your website before you upload this so I'll just put down um, URL um, dot I'll say com slash then whatever folder you have your one CSS file in there so slash CSS that's the folder slash then the name of the file default.css now if you have any images that you use on multiple web pages I'll usually just put those pictures in there and then I'll refer to them in here and then inside your CSS file you can just put down smiley and it will be able to read it uh, a safer method is just to type in the full URL of where it will be on your website. So mine would be, this would be programminghelp.org for me, uh, whatever yours is for you. And uh, that makes it so you don't have to copy and paste the same files in every single folder every time you have another web sub page or web page. This makes it a lot easier for organizing. And then your website can look really nice. Uh, I'm not going to save any changes. And that about wraps it up. I, I hope this was help um, this helped you. Uh, if you want to learn more about styles, moving things onto certain pages, using different fonts, and how to make your web page look really nice, I'll be going through that kind of stuff in my CSS web series, uh, which probably won't be long. It probably won't even be as long as this. There there really isn't much of it, so it'll be a whole playlist dedicated to cascading style sheets. And uh, yeah, that's your next playlist once you're done with this you may also now go on to JavaScript now that you know XHTML but I, I would recommend doing CSS first only because it won't take that long that, they, that won't take long and once you're really good with CSS then I would suggest going to JavaScript and then after that you're pretty much good with client-side markup languages um, so until then uh, I hope you enjoy this video series and goodbye